Well, greetings, viewers, and thanks for joining me out in the shop today. What do you think of my new banners for my truck? Got some cool new uh, logo made for some t-shirts. Gonna be showing you those as I wear them on the show. Hope you could see all that. A little windy, camera's shaking. Got some more work to do on this 3-4. Gonna bring it up here, and I'm gonna show you how to get the transmission and all that stuff off. Undo the wires. I am gonna have to take that apart to reseal the oil pan and stuff. I said I'd like to try to put it all in as one unit. I don't think that's gonna happen. Now, you may have seen me do this trick before. Maybe I've explained it, maybe I haven't. But a good way, if you want to lift this whole thing and not have it hang real tail heavy while it's still setting on the floor and before you get a lot of tension on the chain for the engine, put your ratchet strap on there, crank it down real good. Now, I put it directly on the chain coming out of the hoist, not on this hook down here. That's, so that's directly attached to the hoist up there. Helps distribute the weight. I do have it back one notch. Also, you know, safety first and stuff like that. A new trail toy, which you'll be seeing lots more of. Uh, be out proudly displaying uh, who I am. So if you like my show, and uh, yeah, I wish you'd like it and share it too. But enough about that for the time being. I'm going to get this thing up in the air Gonna rest it on a couple of big steel saw mules while I work on it. You'll see how that goes here in a minute. You can see now that it's up in the air some, how that keeps it from hanging real tail heavy. If you do it right and get it on there good and tight, almost holds it up level. All right, so that'll work for the time being. And if you think I'm taking that strap off of there, you think I'm dumber than I look. I got it just up on there to give it some support, make it a little easier for me to show you how to get to these bell housing bolts down here and the torque converter, get all the wires off of it. It's literally just resting on there to keep it from jiggling around so much. Got a little bit ahead of myself when I put the motor mounts in the other day, but I just had enough time to do that. You can fish all these wires out and put them up on top with the engine at this point. Yeah, it was just clipped in to ride up in there and through that one that we oops messed with earlier. So you need to unclip all of those. The bottom one goes the opposite direction. That's why it doesn't want to come out. And then it's attached to the transmission right there, but that can stay. But some days the simplest things take the most problems. Let's see if I can get this gun up in there and get these off. I did soak them down in my favorite rust penetrant ahead of time. Wow. That one didn't want to give up. See if I can get this front one on here. Stripped right out. All right. Uh, I'm just going to cut it off. Kind of show you that process. I'm not using this down pipe anyway, so if I get into that a little bit, but even trying to save it, if you cut at an angle, you can cut that nut off of there and not ruin, hopefully, the stud or your piece. I've done this before on the power steering rack job. But here, like I said, I ain't reusing that head pipe. And I got another stud, but I'm going to uh, see if I can't grab a hammer and chisel now and bust that off of there. All right, I hope you can see that. Uh, I'm going to try to get in there with my hammer and chisel. Tap that open. Hopefully it opens up where you can see what's happening. Uh, yeah, there a hunk of it's coming off already. I didn't get all the way to the very top of the head of it, but... That's a great way to get it off. I hope you can see how that's peeling off of there. Yeah, see that dude's just peeling open. There's the edge of it right there. So yeah, just cut her with a wheel of death. 
And then once it starts uh, going, get your chisel in there and open it up. So hold while I do that. I hope y'all can see this, how I split that around right there. I'll edit one of them out. Uh, but yeah, just cut that at an angle and then use your uh, hammer and chisel, beat that around. It's knowing tips and tricks and things like that that uh, pay the bills, you know, because people don't want to mess with old rusty stuff. And they're like, dude, I don't know how you do it. And you just got to do it. You just got to jump in there and do it. So, yeah, learn how to do things like that. Don't be afraid. Think outside the box, shit like that. Like I say, learn how to do little things like that. Hang around with old guys like me and uh, teach you how to do stuff like that. Or watch my show. Share my show with your friends. Tell your friends. Be the life of the party. I don't know how that'll help me, but I appreciate it. See, now, I got into that a little bit there, but it still wouldn't hurt it if I was to have to use this uh, tailpipe again. But it didn't get into the head pipe at all, and I'll try a nut on that, and as long as it stays and threads on, it doesn't matter about that slice in there. One stuck bolt can make the difference between an hour job and an all day job. I'm going to go underneath next though and get the uh, power or the uh, transmission cooler lines all loose and out of the way. And then I'm going to show you how to get the bell housing bolts undone. So yeah, that's how I'm going to do it. I am going to change these rubber uh, puck mounts in here too, but I don't have those yet. So let me get some more bolts loose here. Sometimes like on this bolt right here, I'll mess around with something for so long Trying to get it with like vice grips or beat another socket on it or something and then cutting that thing off of there Probably don't take two minutes I'll Tell you when you got a nice brand new clean pair of goggles on you forget you're even wearing them I walking around with them. I'm wondering why my face was so warm <laughs> Doof now a little one inch extension right there that comes in handy a lot. I'm glad I got that. I'll show you how to get those bolts out of the bottom there. Now, first thing you got to do is remove this cover plate right here. It is protected. Protected. It is held on by some 12s. There's two on the other side also. Nothing directly on the bottom. They're kind of greasy and yucky here. That's why we're doing all this. Hope you enjoyed watching the valve covers and the timing belt. If you want to know how to do those, watch those. If you like my show, check out some of my old videos too. I've been doing this for a little while now. Pry that dude off of there with a uh, screwdriver. It's got a little gasket and it does go up in there just a little bit, but now you can see the torque converter bolts. Those are the ones we gotta get to. There's a notch right here where you can get to them easy in the oil pan. You can get your socket in there and get them all started. I'll show you how I go about it here. Indentation, whatever you wanna call it, right there in the oil pan. You can see it. Plain as day. This is my favorite oil change wrench, by the way. So I'm gonna move this over. You see, to where my socket will fit on it. I need just a little bit more. These are 14s. Now you get your socket on there. And as you go to loosen, It'll push your socket right up or your ratchet right up against that detent. Can you see that? Am I in your way? And then just break her loose. Go ahead and spin her on out of there. Now in the meantime, you've grabbed your 19 for your... Uh, pulley you're in a crank pulley on the bottom and you just spin her around till the next one comes down you can do that with your 14 to get it centered to start with but you gotta 
do the whole thing or you know spin it by the crank pulley because you can't grab another one so it's a kind of a repeat the process from here to you spin her around and get all those out of course be mindful when you're turning your crank that you're turning it clockwise because you don't want to spin the engine backwards all right, at this point, after you've spun that crank around and uh, taken all six of the bolts out of your torque converter from your flywheel, and they're all on the floor there together, what you got next is a 17, 17, 17, 17, another one up top there. I can set it down on the floor at this point and get it off of this crazy concoction I got it on, so let me do that here real quick. Now here's another top tip from Fun Junkie Garage right there. Leave that much of your cross member on, or if you don't want to cut it, they come apart like that. Leave that attached to your transmission and your engine will stand up by itself in your shop. Bolts out real quick. Alright, now you can see up there where most of these are. You got a 17 right there on here. One up here, one here, one here, and one over here. Now, that is all of your bolts from your transmission, right Oswald? It should be ready to come apart now. We'll lift it up a little bit just by the engine here. Put a 2x4 or a 4x4 four four rather underneath the bell housing. You can see you got your gap starting right there where the blade of my screwdriver is. It's pretty obvious where the transmission trans or engine meet together. Try to give her another couple of jiggles. That generally makes it just a little bit larger opening that I have created by jiggling it and wiggling it back and forth. That gap right in there. Uh, you might have to stick the screwdriver in there and give it a little extra wiggle jiggle. It's going to come out crooked on both sides. So you got to kind of go back and forth and fish it. But that's all there is to it. Now one thing here you'll find I forget 9 out of 10 times when doing this. Is that little bolt right there that holds the dipstick in? So I, I never get it till I'm trying to figure out why that transmission won't let go. So anyway, you see, it's finally let go. You just got to watch that dipstick as you move your engine out of the way. There is the Toyota metal plate on the back of your engine here. This metal plate, the thin metal plate. Make sure if you do put a beater stick in there, a pry bar, uh, rather that you go between the metal plate and the transmission, not between the metal plate and the engine because that metal plate's bolted on. And just speaking of top tips from Fun Junkie Garage today, you could say I'm just full of it. But a lot of guys like me have to do everything themselves. An easy way to move all this right here if you got a nice smooth concrete floor. Uh, just put you a little axle saver around your uh, output flange there and use your chain. Uh, don't forget to keep this front end under a 4x4 or uh, and that'll cause that torque converter there can fall forward. You definitely don't want that torque converter to move its place. But that needs to be in that place right there for now. And that's a good way to move it. Now I don't have the right size bolts. That's my sign that I need to stop for the day. Uh, I'm tired anyway. So I'll be back on this fresh. Now before there was Harbor Freight, there was Cummins Tool Sales. And they would come around to places like your National Guard Armory and advertise and send out flyers. And you could go there and buy really cheap stuff like Harbor Freight. All right, viewers, it's a new day. It's a fresh start. I got on a fresh shirt. Just one. 
and I am freshly out of $32 as I had to go to the hardware store and buy these bolts which are way too long a box of washers to compensate for their extra length so that I can put this on an engine stand but that's all right I had to have it yes I did I'll loosen these bolts up here real quick go ahead and thread this on I like to move these in and get this like this you see the difference there that way this is above the center more towards the top this is a better way in my opinion it kind of see by the gaps there where they uh, are I like to say a little bit above center Tighten these up. Don't forget to do that so that nothing shifts or moves when you're trying to flip it over. I say just common sense sometimes, but then I tell you, a little bit of common sense can go a long way. Now, while this is up in the air like it is here, I'll just bring this to it and guide it with my knees. And slide it right up on there. I got to go get the pin for it. And since I lost the pin for it long ago, it just gets a bolt shoved in there today. Push the chain loose. Give it a nice wiggle jiggle on your stand there. You can tell when you're going to be okay. <laughs> what up, Swaldo? Oh, I got to drain the oil first. <laughs> well, that would have been a mess, wouldn't it? Hold, please. I got a seven quart pan here with my six quart motor, so that ought to work out just right. Hey, that wasn't in there as tight as anything. Some people crank them down so hard I can't hardly get them out. This one's got a new gasket on it, too. Hey, that looks not bad at all. Smells really good. Smells like good oil. Can you imagine if I'd have turned that over without doing this first? That'd have made a hell of a mess. Well, okay, I had to stop this from flooding over. I'm glad I stood here long enough to watch a little bit of it because that's a seven quart pan and that's a six quart motor and it had reached its edge. How much of this you think I'm actually going to get in there? Oh. Some. That's why I put a rag down first. So we'll see how much more oil is in this thing. Look. I got filters here because. You always got that five quart and a filter deal. Well, the Tundra takes seven and the three four takes six. So I always end up with extra filters. So got plenty of filters on hand. And if you do change your own oil, this one's got cellophane on it. Some of them don't. Most of them do. I don't know how many of them mechanics nightmare shows I watch. Where this filter people have put them on with that plastic so don't forget to take that off of there now I don't know what everybody's favorite kind of uh, oil filter wrench is but I like this one with the expanding jaws it kind of closes down on it as you crank it you got to get it on there right you got to kind of hold it but once you get it as you crank it tightens down on the on the filter of course easier out here a lot of things easier hell i think i might just start pulling motors and doing maintenance i would not do that just a little swoop around there and then when i put it on the filter back on we should make sure you got your threads going right Run it on there until it stops, and then give her all you got after that, but don't use a tool on it. Just your main grip, 
And now I can show you the proper way, or my way. I always say the proper way because it's my show and what I say goes. So if I say that's the proper way, it's the proper way. But once you get your pen out, I'm going to have to go the other way around because of the exhaust pipe here would hit. Just make sure you got a good grip on it. Be careful, be in run position as you go. Don't let it free fall is the main thing, I guess, that's important here. Go nice and slow and easy with it. It's pretty plain to see that this one's been leaking. All right, now you need to get this plastic piece off. It's got a couple of clips. You pry out with a screwdriver and force it off but when there's rust and crud. It makes it way more difficult. I started to show you that and then I started swearing at it and I just thought I would not do that. So you can move it out of the way without undoing the ground or your starter wires over here. You can go around to start taking these off now. It's fun. All right, now you got them all off of there. Take me a rubber mallet and buff that off. We got a little bit of uh, silicone, and that's just silicone. But you can see. Like on this edge here where all that is wet, you can see over here where it's not out to the edge, but over here where it was wet all the way out past the bolts. That just meant their sealer wasn't consistent. Like there it was leaking, there it was leaking, over here back in this back, and you can see it out there beyond the screws. So that's how you know that your gasket was leaking for sure when you take it off. And it is time well spent. So clean that pan out real good. Uh, give this rear main a, a good inspection. And then put the pan back on here real quick. Oh, you can see inside the pan, there's a little bit of crud right down there in the very bottom. Some more of that gasket material. But the inside of this engine is awesome and amazingly clean and has no sludge buildup. I'll go clean this pan. I'm going to clean that surface, get this back in, get that engine up right. I did, by the way, give this rear main seal a thorough inspection, and it is not leaking at all, not a drop anywhere. And again, I'm going to believe that's OG Toyota, and I'm just going to accept it. It's good and leave it there. So yeah, right, wrong, or indifferent, that's my decision not to change that, and that's the way that's going today. Now I got this one all nice and cleaned up inside and out. I'm where I got my gasket laid out here, I don't know why I was pointing to that. Uh, I've got one of the rubberized cork gaskets. I like those, I prefer all rubber ones, but I couldn't find an all rubber one for this. I don't want to use just form in place gasket on it. So, going to go ahead and put the pan on. And then just run the uh, bolts back in. It's a similar process to torquing like a valve cover. Now your whole surface here is clean. There's really nothing to be extra cautious about other than to make sure your pan gasket was all in the right spot and lined up to begin with. Then you line up your two here that have the Pins, lift front, scooch gasket as needed. Lift rear, scooch gasket as needed. And there you go. Let me grab the bolts. I'm gonna clean them up real quick. These little trays are also nice to clean your nuts and bolts in. Just spray a little brake parts cleaner in there and swirl them around. They don't get lost. They stay stuck down there. And uh, so, yeah, I like these little trays a lot. 
generally when you go to Harbor Freight, you can get the little ones for free uh, about every third month or so. All right, and as you go to put these back in, not a bad idea to have your light up there. You can look down in the hole and see that the gasket is lined up in its proper place. I will go around, uh, start all these in, run them in finger tight. Bring them all down snug. Got to go around this twice. Just using a couple of fingers on it. Around here with this and bring these down. You don't want to see any gasket squishing out the side. It's also very important that where your bolts go that those areas are nice and flat. Now this one, every single one of them was perfectly flat, which also makes me think a person's not been in here and, and fucked with this since it was put together at the factory. Good and snugly the way I like them to be. I'm going to go around that a couple more times till I'm satisfied. This is such a nice wrench to get up on the drain pans and stuff. It's always been my favorite for Toyota, for Toyota drain plugs. All right, I'm just going to spin this baby back over again without hurting myself. I'll grab something here firmly. And I will, I promise. There it is. Now there is a position you can put the pin in at various places, but using this pivot point here, it's pretty easy to spin her back up. I just like to go slow, one, so I don't hurt myself, and two, so I don't drop this accidentally. Uh, so anyway, that is changing the oil pan and separating the engine transmission and transfer case off a uh, transmission transfer case as a single unit you get the idea though if this was in the vehicle at least now you know where all the bolts are getting a got to get this welded up in here drop the exhaust change that power steering line that'll be the engine install video she's ready to go back in now and I'll put the transmission and transfer case up after the engine as opposed to trying to get the engine to meet them. I think that'll be the easier way to go about it. So I appreciate you watching this. Like and subscribe. If you liked my show, like it, please. If you want to see more, subscribe. There are links in the description. I like comments, too. Let me know what you think about my banners or my shirts. Uh, let me know what you think about that oil pan. If anybody's got any input, I love the comments, and I love reading the comments and replying. Anyway, like, subscribe, check links, comment, all that good stuff. I appreciate you joining me out here for some more tech stuff on this 3-4. Can't wait to get it put back in, start the wiring on this. Appreciate y'all. Have a super great day.